Well, ladies and gentlemen, the amount of stuck valves, and I don't know if this one's stuck yet 100% or not, could just be busted, but the amount of stuck valves I've been seeing is off the chart. Like, I've had like 10 in the last month. So this is on a wind generator, but this repair is going to work for whatever kind of generator you have. It should be the same thing. Let's hope it's not destroyed, busted. I don't think it is. We're going to get right into it. We are going to remove the carburetor here because I want to spray the cleaner in there at the valve, especially if it's not an inverter or overhead cam. Taking the carburetor off allows you to get to the valve to clean it. But as you can see, it's not coming up. What I'm going to do real quick is just to test it. I'm going to take I'm going to take that little piece off. I'm going to take it and I'm going to lightly hammer it down to make sure that it is going down. If it's not coming back up, that's fine. But if I have it down, I have access to clean it better too. So let's go ahead and hammer this down just a tad bit and see what she does. So like I said, I'm taking a hammer. I'm not whacking it. I'm just tapping it. So for people who are saying that, you know, you can use a rubber mallet, a dead blow hammer, whatever you have, but I'm just tapping it. So that's good. It's moving. Okay, so it is moving down. That's a good thing. So let's remove this carburetor. So it's going to be the same thing for any of these box style carburetors that you see right here. All you're going to need to remove this, make sure you're in camera frame here, is an 8 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. There's going to be either 8 total or 6 total. This one has 6 total for the first part of the carburetor. And that's um, getting to the getting the air filter cover off. And like I said, 90% of all generators that have this big old rectangle air filter box with the little square in here, it's going to be the same thing. There will be one 10 millimeter on the back side, which I'm going to ignore because I never bother with that. And I actually have a win. This one's in warranty. And I have another win in the shop. These are really popular because they're so cheap. They're cheaper than Harbor Freight. I have another win that is going to be another video. And I don't know if I've already posted it because I haven't worked on it yet. But I have a, I'm editing a Honda stuck valve, which you've probably already seen now because I guarantee that video is coming out first. And I don't know if I want to put this stuck valve really close. I also have like a review coming out too. So yeah, so stay tuned and subscribe because I got a lot of stuff coming out, a lot of repairs. Once you get those 8 millimeters off, like I said, there's technically three 10 millimeters. There's one in the back that's super pain to get on all these generators. Like I said, we're going to ignore that. And once we get those off, all you got to do is just pull it, bend it away. There we go. We got the gasket. Now from here... We can slightly pull out the carburetor, move the throttle. Ow, it got poked by the spring. The spring's always sharp. Pull out the throttle, pull out the spring, push that aside. I just realized that this is dual fuel too, so I am going to need a Phillips and a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay, got a Phillips and a brand new pair of needle nose pliers. So let me open these pliers real quick. These spring up too, that's pretty good. But I'm using these pliers just to remove the, <clears throat> what do you call it, the fuel clamp. I better turn off the fuel too, right? Oh, somewhere. I see where that spring poked me. Look at that. God dang, that spring poked me pretty good. I'm not even drunk or anything. I'm bleeding a lot. I didn't even know I was bleeding. The spring got me. That's extra money. It's going to cost wind now. No, I'm just playing. You gotta watch out for the sharp objects when you're doing mechanic work, huh? Why is it bleeding so much for a little poke? So now once I got that off, I can remove the propane line, which every dual fuel I ever see, nobody's using the propane. It's very rare that I see people using the propane. I think it's because propane, your carburetor is never going to get dirty. If you never put gas in it, no, I don't even think I have to remove the propane line. Yeah, I'll just move the carburetor over. There we go. Ow, it's burning. So now that I have access to this, I can spray inside and get to that valve. You can, if you want, 
You can remove this gasket here, and you should be able to access up in there. I'm gonna grab this little light here, and let's see if we can shine it in there and take a look at that valve. Yeah, I don't know how good you guys can see that, but it is a little gummed up. So now, I'll just show you what I'm gonna do here. For some reason, the gas is still drip, drip, dripping. There we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner or solvent of your choice, and you're just gonna spray it at that valve, and you'll see all the nasty stuff come out. But as I spray it, now I'm gonna take my little tapper, I'm going to tap it down some more. I'm going to spray it. Now what I like to do is take a big screwdriver, find a place to reach under that. You can remove the tap it to make it easier. And what I'm doing is I'm just prying this up now. I actually have a really nice like pry bar that I use. I might bust it out, but everybody has a big flathead. Well, at least they should. Now I'm going to take my spray. There it goes. Now it's gushing. Tap it down some more. Spray some more. Now pry it back up. There it goes. Now it's coming back up. This has been stuck for a minute. The spring's probably bad. Probably needs to be replaced. No, the other spring looks the same. Oh, drop it down. Hang on. <laughs> Tap it back down. Should just be coming right up now. Yep, there we go. No, it's still not perfect. Oh, wait, I forgot that little piece that I took off. But still, I'm not happy with that. Oh, there it goes. Now it's all the way up. Let me push it back down a little more. Still need a little bit more cleaning. Now, oh, there it goes. There it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Put this little cap back on. Yeah, see, now I actually have to push the valve down to get my tap on. There we go. Now we should be able to see when I pull this, this go up and down. I have too much cleaner in there right now, so it's seasoned. There we go. There we go. Okay. She is clean. So now what we can do is we're going, I don't know why I tapped the screen like that. I'm going to put our gasket back on or our spacer. From here, we can slap our carburetor back on. Hopefully not get poked by that spring again. Now, all we have to do to make sure it starts, we're going to put this gasket back on right here. We're going to put our fuel line back on, put our clamp back on. I guarantee it's going to start now, so I'm not really stressing, but you never know. So the only thing I'm going to put on, I'm you don't, to test it to make sure it's running, you do not have to, shit, why did I say um, you don't have to do the air filter box. You could just put the carburetor on, make sure it's working, and then from there, we can start it up, and if she's running, 
We're golden. If she's not, we got more work to do. But I've done a lot of these. I have a feeling we're good. Sometimes you have to do a valve adjustment. Sometimes you don't. Because the carburetor is 10 millimeter, and this is 10 millimeter as well, we don't have to switch. Let's put our spark plug connection back on. Let's turn our gas on, and let's see what happens. Now I'm thinking she might smoke. I've done this all in one take, too. I'm getting really good at these valve repairs. Let's see if she electric starts. Okay, it's still a little seized up. I might pull off that spark plug just to relieve this pressure. Yeah, let me relieve this pressure off this spark plug. I sprayed a lot of chemical in there. Most of the time it just goes out the exhaust or back out the intake. I think the name of this video is going to be how to diagnose and fix a stuck valve in under 15 minutes. So I got the spark plug out. I'm going to pull this a little bit. There we go. Shot it all out. If it still seizes up like that, that valve might be busted. But I was spinning it earlier without the chemicals in there, so I doubt it's that. Okay, let's fire it up now, shall we? I have it on a battery charger. Yeah, that battery's dead. I'll leave it on the charger, though. Big ass engines aren't isn't easy. 457 cc. Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate this video. Did it all in one take. I'm seeing a lot of stuck valves. It's from gas sitting too long in the engine. And yes, it's either ethanol, but also non-ethanol gas evaporates. And if you have stabilizer, which is recommended and told to use every time in these engines. When that gas evaporates, sorry, you can't breathe. It leaves behind just the oil. The oil from the stabilizer does not evaporate. But anyways, if this video helped you, hit that like button. If it didn't help you, hit that dislike button. Leave me a comment saying, hey, you suck. But yeah, other than that, whether you liked it or didn't like it, subscribe. Because I appreciate it. Have a good day.